welcome to the Mad Witch Cottage. It's a bit noisy here. Um, I've got pubs in the garden mowing. I've got some man, random man in his garage hammering. So there's a hullabaloo of all sorts going on here. Um, this morning I've done a couple of videos on making um, some a salve, a facial scrub, etc. So I thought I'd just do a quick intro really to this because I have this is it is now eleven o'clock and that's only my second coffee. When I'm making um spells or, or, or salves or whatever you want to call your witching, excuse me, trying to get this camera to uh a better kind of view. I feel like we're too zoomed in. Um I have to pull out all of my uh witchy kind of books and stuff. And this one is my travel grimoire, which I tend not to travel with now because the thing's huge. And I've shown this many times on my channel. It is just a hot mess of anything and everything. <clears throat> By rights, it should travel with me wherever I go because it is really good for uh, adding those little things that you come across uh, along the way it's got all recipes it's got it's got everything in it it's got correspondence in it it's got books it's got what was oh, it's just got everything in here what was that it was i think that was a whole load of stuff from a book that i typed out because i wanted to be able to take it with um and yeah, I've just, I, I often use this as well for practicing of, of, you know, how to work with things or rituals or whatever. Um, so it, it really is quite a hot mess of stuff. But, um, you know, there's my correspondence bit. I don't use that much. Just anything I think is pretty, I stick in here. Um, I liked painting that magpie bits of books are coming out now um it's just anything anything and everything i find oh look there's some um i was looking for those the other day some honesty um seeds to plant up so I, and i know i've got some somewhere um but i don't know where so i might have to use those anyway um i could did i find what i wanted in here i'm not sure i did can't remember now. Oh, anyway, um, so the other the re the, the reason why I can never find anything is because it's always all over the place. So the first place I tend to go is my big practical grimoire because that's the one that sits on the kitchen table all the time, never moves. Um, it's just full of everything uh, mostly recipe recipes and the like sorry nearly lost a box there let's move that out of the way look everything's in uh, uh, plastic wallets and I, I tend to print stuff off and that's how it works it's meant to be practical but then I decided that I was going to start this herbal one which I've mentioned a couple of times before so I went great guns into dandelion day uh, back in the spring because at the time there was literally we had I think we had a really long miserable winter or maybe it was just me um, but that's how it felt and the dandelions suddenly sprung up in spring and they were everywhere and they were just the best delight and I I, I just have to say on behalf of dandelion that it, I know in the witch community they are not underrated but it is very sad that People see dandelions and, and automatically think of untidy gardens. And yet in the spring, the dandelion flowers literally covered the whole of the garden and looked stunning. And they were such a joy over the winter period that we'd had. Um, anyway, I f so I started Great Guns with my, the idea was that I was going to do this with all the flowers. And I am going to do this with all the flowers. I am. So I pulled out all my dandelion stuff and then I kind of, it all the pages got stuck together, which really miffed me. Um, so I kind of need to redo it because it just it's just a hot mess of crap because I hob, 
hodgepodged it as you do and it stuck together even though I had dried them I know you're going to say well you obviously didn't dry them did you but I had and I've noticed it's done it in my grimoire as well um, so what I shall do I will not be deterred I will not be deterred I will just redo this page and I just went hodgepodge it so anyway uh, so this morning and I've done the video I I haven't watched the video back it's probably a hot mess too but I made my dandelion salve now I was going to make St John's Wort but there are elements of, there's a property in um, Hypericum which can have an adverse effect if you are on medication um, so I decided that I would use the properties of dandelion to make my first salve where's my little thing gone never mind anyway I must get back to that actually because it's a really good reference guide and here are the books that I kind of drag out um you've seen this a, a million times before the modern herbal has a wealth of information about dandelion and it's predominantly where most people if you look at modern um herbal books you will find that they do refer back to this book um, and Culpepper's book as well. I've got both. I don't think I've got both of them here. What I, I mean, there's just pages, okay, on dandelion in here. And you think about how, uh, I mean, how old this book is. I don't know when this publication came out. Uh, first published in, uh, uh, well, what does it say? It was published in 1931. No, no, wait a minute. Um, well, it must have been around that time. Cults of Forgospies, do, 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 cunning men, describe the herbs. It, the, the point I was going to try and make was that people put a lot more store on dandelion. And it's clear because there's a lot in here. Uh, the parts that you can use medicinally, the history, um, and then you get... Um, different uh, recipes for using it and he's right outside the door now I hope you can't hear that too well um, there's you know they, it's good for gallstones apparently as well so so this is the one to sort of read first up so that's that one and then I also refer to this one because this also will well it'll certainly mention has it got in here? Yeah. there we go um what this one does is kind of um sieve some of the information out so you get correspondence to astrology and what it's used for um and it is a it, it, even in the modern herbal, um, Mrs. G refers to Hecate because that's where the references come from. Way all the way back, uh, the dandelion is referred to as a underworld um, plant. Um, so, if you are um, a follower of Hecate, you will find that this is a really good plant to use for um for devotions um i love it it says here look you can you can wear ritual beads um the where is it the the root can be gathered fresh and sliced into pieces that's right um now like i say i i haven't yet got round to using the root for coffee i'm a coward i've ground it down but it smells like dirt um, and I haven't quite managed to get any further with that. I could, I should go back really and see what, I think it, I think I've mentioned it really, but the actual, um, uh, the reference to Hecate in here, if I can find it, um, probably not easily now. But if you want to know, the association with Hecate, 
then I would suggest you go and do some research because clearly you aren't going to get much information out of me because I cannot easily see uh, it's it's mentioned here under John Evelyn but it is very teeny tiny writing and I don't feel that I can I would want to spend too long on this intro so anyway the underworld reference um, the other book that I often pull out when I'm going to be doing um, some witching in the kitchen is um, this book it's got lots of different uh, recipes in it lots of different spell work um, but anyway um, so what will happen is I shall get up in the morning and think right I need to do this and bang, I'm sorry I'm knocking the camera um, so this chunky monkey is kind of the, the go, to, go to for all of that um, so I used the dandelion oil that I made in the previous video and I added the beeswax and the um, sheer butter to that with some, because there was no fragrance, I have added lavender oil. It did say orange blossom or sweet orange, but I didn't have any, so I couldn't do that. Um, and then the other thing I made was the facial scrub which is here and that's the recipe I used for that you can see in the background let me just pause hold on oh, it's right outside the door sorry it's really loud anyway so um, these are I, I mean these are all my own rose petals and the lavender um, and I've you know you've seen these actually quite recently my my lilac sugar that I made and I, I showed this on my other video it's just a, a coconut uh, oil that I've used with uh, a few essential oils. Um, I can't say, um, these are just the ones that I've used this time round, but that, you know, that's not necessarily a recommendation because I've, I just picked up whatever I had to hand and those were what I had to hand. So I, I wouldn't, you know, like to necessarily recommend those, um, but I can't. You know, I try to go as organic as I can. Uh, I'm, I'm also, I like the idea of working through the uh, herb crafters as well. I think this is a really nice, I mean, I've edged mine in green and yellow. It's because I couldn't decide whether I wanted to do uh, green or yellow. Um, so because I don't spend, I don't feel enough time with my, my herbs I think that having this out on the table makes it much uh, easier for me to to make some bits and pieces and the only other thing I haven't shown is the witch hazel which literally is witch hazel and essential oil um, so I want to get back to writing up in here because I think this is much easier a reference than trying to find various recipes in there. So that's probably going to be um, the, the job for later. I've also got to start cutting um, some herbs, my parsley in the garden. Did I just, did I pass parsley? Do they even show parsley? I don't know if they do, to be fair. Um, I need to, to start uh, drying some herbs. I need to be at home to cut my um, mugwort um, and start making. I have already cut some sage. I love that. Look at that. I had a witch hazel in the garden. Mine was in a pot and it never flowered quite like that. But uh, I lost it when we had a, a really hot summer, sadly, which... Um, just there's a mullion actually growing at home my garden at home has become such a witchy garden and I never planted mullion it just came up on its own <laughs> I have lovely jars full of calendula um so there's our lovely St John's and my St John's wall is still flowering um I say mine it's my father-in-law's he gave me a piece 
of his uh, years ago and it just went mad in the garden so I have got plenty of, uh, of, of St John's wort lemon balm I've planted up and I have I think my chamomile might actually have died I, I, I couldn't find it when I went looking I've planted some um, cuttings of lavender, French lavender, and here we have my beautiful dandelion. Um, I don't know, I haven't got any nasturtiums this year, that's a shame. Um, I was saying to my daughter, she was oh, she's reading up on her, um, on all her herbs and stuff, and I said to her, you do not need white sage. You can use the sage that we grow in the garden. It works just the same. It's na it's a native plant to America, I believe. It doesn't, I can't get white sage to grow here. I tried. It, it will go well in the summer, but it won't overwinter. Um, it just gets too cold, even when I've brought it in. So I think um, there's nothing wrong in using what you have to hand. Um, so yeah, so there we go. My mugwort grows like a weed in my garden. It, my garden is definitely a witch's garden. Everything witchy grows quite, um, oops, in abundance there. Look, I can't see through the camera, so I just knocked it. Right, well, so that's the intro to the making of the salve, making of the um, facial and body scrub and uh, the extra little sort of oily one that I've made. Um, because apparently I think this might go up instead of another video that I've done on ancestral work. I'm not sure whether to put that up or not. This is already 16 minutes long and all I've done is waffle. So anyway, guys, uh, thank you for popping by and um, speak soon. Um, this is the most cobbled together video ever because I don't have anything over here. Um, that I would use at home so I've got some boiling water here some, but you know I don't really want it to <clears throat> necessarily boil so I'm going to just let that cool for a little bit I've got this is the dandelion oil if you can see that um, I didn't get as much out of it as I expected and I think that's partly because I wasn't really sure what I was doing, wasn't sure what I was going to do with it. And I just thought we'll give this a, you know, a go. But I want to make a salve and I said that I would follow up and do that. And um, so the distilled oil has been sat in the cupboard out in the dark. Um, I have literally just got 100 grams. That's all I had let, that came after the distilling process, which is approximately what you want for a little jar. Um, I've got 10 grams of uh, beeswax and 10 grams of shea butter. I don't have sweet orange, uh, which, you know, is annoying because I've known long enough I needed it. But I've been kind of waiting to do a big proper um essential oil shop um i've been researching which ones i think are the best and i've been hanging on and hanging on because i've either been at home or i've been away and i haven't got away yet but we were meant to be away so i haven't ordered anything so i have some lavender oil which i purchased in swanage so all i've got is the lavender now the plan is that we're going to put this to warm up into the water um, because that's boiling and I'm just not sure about putting that in boiling water. I'm going to add a little bit of cold water um, because I just, I'd rather it took its time than, um, this is, I mean, I'm just literally using a jar that I had cleaned out. So the process, as far as I'm aware, is that we start to warm our oil in the water and to that we add the shear butter, or the shear butter, the, uh, what's it, the beeswax, um, because it's the beeswax that's going to give it um, the solid uh, the solid um, solidness, I'm going to get my words out. 
So I don't know how well you can see this. I'm just using a little wooden spoon I found in. I think I don't think it matters really. Um, what? Anyway, so once this is uh, melted, I'll add the sheer butter. Um, I suppose I could turn that up a wee bit now. I just don't want to start boiling the liquid. I don't think it, this is a rush job. Um, I have also got a jar of um, St. John's War Oil, which um, I picked around about midsummer. Um, but the, pro the, the problem with St. John's War is that it does have an agent in it that does um, work against any medication that you're on. And as I'm diabetic, it's not perhaps the most effective for me, but I like, I find it hard not to pick the flowers and do something with them because, um, you know, if you're not on any medication at all, you could uh, easily use St John's wort salve on your arthritis or um, uh, your aches and pains and I believe it's good for skin conditions as well so it has a lot of uh, healing benefits okay so that's pretty much now dissolved um, so I'm going to add the sheer butter oops she says um, to this and the lavender oil I wish I had the orange blossom it's not uh, the orange blossom the orange sweet orange I've known about it long enough and I've, I think I kept putting this off and putting it off and putting it off and I think partly because I just I think I was just a little bit nervous that it was just going to be a flop um, so I'm going to just let that um, completely dissolve because I've only got a hundred grams minimum, I mean, I really am to the wire with that um, actual oil. I'm not convinced. I don't know yet how close the tent. Oh, I can smell that lavender. Let's put some drops of that in. Oh, that's just come out like, okay. <laughs> no counting those drops. They just came right out. Um, this isn't a brand I, I know particularly well. Um, I just It was just one that came from the health shop in town. So I trusted that they know what they're talking about when they buy in their stuff. That said, I have, like I say, been doing some research and um, I'm going to uh, pick a different brand um, for when I do my shop. I did think about just getting from... Um, I'm going to put a bit more in. I really want it to smell of an essential oil and not the sheer butter or, or anything else. I want it to have a, uh, a strong scent. Yeah, I, I want to do the research on the essential oils and pick a brand that I feel has got the best that I can afford. I've mentioned this before. I'm not saying that isn't a good brand. I just, I don't know. And... Um, that's all now completely dissolved. I mean, I can smell the lavender, so I suppose that's a good thing. Um, I'm going to just clean out my jar. Um, now, the trouble is, I do not know if that's going to solidify at all. Um, just popping it into the cup that I've already used and straight away it's actually uh, it is going nice and soft but it isn't just liquid anymore so I think I I have the makings of oops, a um, a salve now I don't know very much. This is my first ever salve. I don't know what I'm doing. Well, I do know what I'm doing. And it, to be fair, if you've got the ingredients, it's quite straightforward, actually. Um, so I'm going to try and use this dandelion on my, my knee and my arthritis. 
um, and see how it does because I picked the dandelions back in spring when we'd had a long horrible winter to be fair and they were by far the first thing to uh, really brighten the days and they were everywhere in the garden they were just amazing now I'm sure there are professionals out there who will say your oil had a few little tiny bits left in it well I did double filter it but there were a few little tiny bits in it but I'm gonna just I'm going with the flow here um, I'm not going to be see even if you look it has has gone hard so I think oh look at that look see little tiny bit of yeah I mean that that might be even a little bit too soft it might be that I could have added a bit more to it and does it I think do you know what I'm going to be really I'm going to put just a tiddly toddly dot more in there because it's still quite strong smelling of um of what's it so uh, look it's it is it's solidifying straight out of the you know now even now um have I got it right who knows I'm going to let that cool actually I'm not going to put the lid on it just yet I'm going to let that cool and once it's as you can already see it's starting to to harden and if that works that's great I'm going to try that with other things as well so that's the first of the um uh, sort of witching in the kitchen I've got some other bits to do but that one I think what I'll do with the St John's wall is I will probably make that up next maybe not today but I will make that up but I will have to keep that for somebody who doesn't have medication um, because I I don't think I can risk uh, I don't know to what degree it would actually affect my uh, meds and if I ask the doctor they'll just look at me as if I'm mental but hey ho right there you go that's that so this is my facial scrub recipe come out of my practical grimoire um it's not my recipe but I've used this pretty much um for forever when I've been making them this is my old version now I've made this as I say many times and this one was a bit oily um so although it's lasted a lot longer than I would say it's actually supposed to um I will use this still when I'm gardening and I will use it to to wash my hands in because it helps to get the dirt out um anyway so here is the lavender um no not that i keep saying that the lilac sugar that i made back in, months ago and i will say a couple of things my friend tony did mention to me that not all the lilacs are actually edible and i didn't i didn't know that and i hadn't read it anywhere so um to be uh, on the safe side i would suggest that you either know your lilacs a lot better than i do or in this instance i use this for uh external use as opposed to ingesting it and as i don't really use sugar anyway it's not the you know big deal and the other thing i would say is i left the little lilac flowers in here they have gone brown i mean it does smell of lilacs you know but the the and probably in the future i would do it slightly differently anyway so first things first i've got some uh, of the lilac sugar which i've pulsed down to make it a little bit more sort of um uh, soft and in here i've got 1.5 ounces of melted coconut oil it does say that you can add um i think you can see what i'm doing you can add uh almond oil or if you need extra um, liquid but I found as I say last time it felt as if I had too much oil um, and not enough sort of oomph um, for for the actual facial scrub I was putting what felt like a lot more oil on now I'm going to add some uh, rose petals to this because I that's I, I like 
I like the feel of this because this one is going to be um, one I will use in the shower, in the bath, um, for my face, for my skin. Um, I like the pretty colours. I've got lavender in here as well. I'm going to pop a little bit of that lavender. Oh, no, you can come out. But I mean, honestly, how unprofessional is this? Let's see how that mixes up. I don't know. I mean, it's for me. It doesn't really matter whether anybody else thinks it's... You could use all sorts of different um, mixtures, I think, with the base mix. And I'm going to add a little bit of lavender uh, essential oil. It says 20 drops, but this thing does not easily count drops. It just goes whoosh. Um, last time when I was doing the salve it just came out in a whoosh um, and the other thing that I'm going to add is, as I'm not adding the oil is I've got some of these left over I think I bought those because somebody I'd read somewhere that they're really good for you know I mean you can ingest them obviously that's what they're meant to be for um, but I bought them to put in my um, my facial scrubs and my facial oils and I thought well as I'm not adding the other oil oops I might as well use them in here I'm going to drop that it's slippy just can't I just grabbed a few Don't you just love the unprofessionalism of the Mad Witch Kitchen? <clears throat> Let's say that my hands this morning, while making salves and um, facial scrubs, is, is smelling and feeling all soft. Like I say, the, the last batch I made was just that little bit too oily and I didn't I didn't appreciate the, the the amount of oil to sugar. So I'm hoping this feels a bit better. So I could add some more. I might even add a bit more sugar to that. I don't know, can't decide. It still looks a bit oily to me. The idea is that when you get in the bath, you can. Um, oh, it's going to stick. No, oh, that's handy, isn't it? Um, you 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 can use this as a body scrub, and it's a natural alternative to. I don't know buying something over the counter. You don't know what preservatives have been put in it and i know they say this doesn't last mix it all in a food presser it proved the food processor uh it lasts three months I, I refrigerated it can last longer i don't think it goes off myself but then i suppose that i mean the lavender in the old batch has gone a bit discolored right okay so Getting the mix right is a bit of a... Just going to add a little bit more. So a little in first. There we go. Anyway, um... So there you have it. It couldn't really be simpler and it probably could be, You, could, I mean, if I had uh, other essential oils, I could, I mean, I could have put a bit of rose in there as well. Um, and I probably would have done, but I don't, oh, I'm waiting to get a whole fresh batch of everything. So there you have it, a bit of coconut oil that is, solidifies not just the i don't know if they all i mean the one i had was solid but i just melted it down 
and that's made up. I'll stick that in the fridge. See, even now I can see the oil coming through there. Um, yeah, that still feels quite oily, actually. So what I might do is just add a wee bit more into there. I don't, I just don't want it as oily as it was last time. But in future, take your lavender flowers out, lavender lilac, your lilac flower. Although you could make li lavender sugar. I mean, you could make rose sugar. You don't have to make um, just... I just made the lilac sugar because I love lilacs and I wanted to ca capture their gorgeous essence. This is like when you're a little child and you're in the garden and you're playing with mud. And it also reminds me of watching Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince where he ends up with a recipe book that's got all the sort of spell book rather, potion book. And it, it turns out to be, um, I think it's Snape, isn't it? And he, um, he's written all the alternatives to the... Um, the potions where he's used it and worked it and it's it's kind of um he's he's perfected it right well there you have it that's my version of um a, a facial scrub and i would say that you know if you find a good recipe you'll probably do a way better job than me but that works for me and i'm quite happy with that and it means that i've got some scented sugar that i used myself i've got my own roses and my own lavender um and i can you know use that in the shower in the bath wherever i need to and it will do it will do the job um, so this morning I have made a gorgeous salve um, out of my dandelion. Now the colour is obviously coming predominantly probably from the beeswax, but there is also that lovely yellow from the dandelion. And I'm really, really chuffed with it actually. Um, it's turned out to be better than I expected. So the only others that I've got is, hold on, let me pause you for a moment. So this little little one I've had for ages, this is coconut oil. And all I've added to this is some uh, essential oil and a um, rosehip uh, oil to uh, give it, I mean, it's solid because I've had it in the fridge, but basically it's, I suppose, like a salve, but it's, I suppose, pure concentrate because it's just the, um, coconut oil apparently is very good for your skin very good for your um for your face so for uh and i did i mean i don't want to just rub coconut oil onto my body i think that's just weird so i had some uh, a blend mix that i added to that with the rose hip because rose hips good for your skin as well um so i have that one as well um so basically I think you just saw hubs going past, but hey ho. I've got a scrub, I've got a salve, and I've got a like a facial sort of balm. And um, the only other thing that I have got, which I probably won't show because there's not really much to show, is I bought some uh, witch hazel, which I'll add some essential oil to, and I use that as a toner um, in the mornings. There we go. That's my messy little witching in the kitchen. <laughs> Take care, bye.